Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, I have my two Pride dolls with me from last year because I am going to be doing a Pride doll today. I'm excited because this is actually in collaboration with a couple other YouTubers. So, we have Hexion, Inchantarium, The Dolly Geek, and Kyra's Workshop. And the theme for this year was there basically wasn't a theme, um, it was just everyone was doing a pride doll and it wasn't until after we were all done our dolls that we kind of realized that everybody did like a gender non-conforming doll which is kind of cool so I guess that's the loose theme. So what am I doing? So a while back the Dolly Geek, Cairo's Workshop, and Delightful all did a fairy boy collab. It was a pretty stinking cute collab, not gonna lie. Um, so I decided why not do a fairy boy for pride? And I was contemplating using a Monster High doll for this because I have a couple of them, not like too many, but like, I mean, I have four of them. Um, and for one reason or another, I just didn't want to use each one of them. And the only one that kind of made sense was Slow Mo, but Slow Mo Sculpt, I'm not into it, okay? It has character, but not the character I'm trying to portray with this doll. I decided to go with a doll that was maybe a little bit unexpected. Um, and I just figured if I didn't paint it for this collaboration, then I feel like I was never going to paint this doll. It's a Creatable World doll. And if you guys don't know, the message behind Creatable World is oddly fitting for a Pride doll. Um, it's basically a unisex doll base that you can dress it in any way that you see fit for your gender expression. I believe these dolls are discontinued, which sort of sucks for me as a customizer because I feel like they're great as like doll custom bases. They're just extremely jointed. They come in a bunch of different skin tones. I kind of wish that I picked up a couple more of these before they got discontinued or I think they're discontinued. Um, I only picked up one. I didn't pick up, I picked up like the cheap version of this doll. So it came in basically like pajamas. It didn't have any shoes or anything. And um, it came with a wig, but the wig y'all, the wig. Okay, the wig was not the business. Um, I threw out the wig because it was basically a helmet. Like you could see the cap and the cap was hard. It was, it was not cute. I wanted to make him a dream fairy and I am slightly lightly, slightly lightly inspired by Midsummer's Night Dream. I've never read or seen that play, but I like the visuals on Google, so that's what we're going for. I did the basics of prepping this doll, which is just cutting off all the hair and then putting the head in hot water so that I can pop the head off, it just loosens up all the vinyl popping the head off and then going in through the neck hole with a screwdriver so that I can scrape around on the inside to loosen up all the glue plugs and then pulling out all the glue plugs out through the neck hole with needle nose pliers. I tried to get the paint off with 100% acetone because that's what I normally use, but the paint was just not coming off. A lot of it did come off, but in particular on the eyes, it just wasn't really moving. So I actually had to bust out the sandpaper. This is actually kind of common for a lot of Mattel's newer releases. I don't know what they're using to print on faces, but it is just very heavy duty. I guess kudos to them. But for me, my customizing is annoying. <laughs> it just takes a lot more work than it normally should. This is a sculpt, I dig it. It kind of reminds me of Ever After High a little bit. Actually, think about it, I think this head on an Ever After High body would probably be Chef's Kiss. I would try it, but I only have this one and um, they're discontinued, so I don't know if I can get any more, but if I can, I wanna try it. Maybe you guys should try it, I think it'd be good. I painted the doll's head purple in preparation for hair and gave him a widow's peak, but before we do the hair, I wanted to do the face up. So I spray the doll three times Mr. Super Clear, waiting 15 minutes between each spray and wearing a respirator mask and we get into it. I'm starting with the eyes and this doll is going to have some very classically feminine traits, but I do still want him to look a bit more like a boy. Um, and something that I've learned from anime is that if you want a character to look like a boy, or if you want them to look older, but I'm not really going for that, you would make their eyes look smaller. So I'm giving him smaller eyes than I would with a female doll. Um, I also want them to be kind of, not like half closed, but a little bit more closed. It just sort of gives him a serene expression that I like. I'm going for a sweet cherub look, so the blush on his cheeks and around his face is pretty intense, but the blush on his lips is relatively minimal because I don't want him to look like he's wearing lipstick. You know what's important? I feel like blushing ears is important. 
It just looks very charming. They look like they got hit with some like little wintry winds or something. So don't forget to blush your ears. It looks very nice. I drew in the eyes with a bit of white pencil and then I went over the waterline with a bit of peach pencil. This brush is actually a kind of expensive liner brush that I bought for makeup. Um, I don't know why it's expensive because it's kind of crappy. It's like splayed in all different directions and it's really spiky but it creates this perfect blotchy blush look for the cheeks that I love so much. I think I mentioned this in like every video, but I love this so much. So I'm taking blue pastel and I'm putting that around the brow bone and on the forehead and just generally around the face. I think that kind of the cool thing about Mr. Super Clear and sort of the brilliant thing about Mr. Super Clear is that it looks intense now, the blue, but once I spray it, it dulls down and you work in layers with Mr. Super Clear. So like the more layers on your skin is layers, it just works. It's a beautiful thing, you know? Um, it really lends to like a skin-like finish. I also add veins around in those areas as well, around the eyes and the forehead. They're just branch-like pencil marks with a very sharp, very light blue Faber-Castell pencil. And if you look, I'm not holding the pencil like all the way down towards the point. That is just because it gives me a looser hand so that my pencil marks are not so dark. I gave him purple eyes going from a cooler, darker purple to a warmer, lighter purple at the bottom of the iris. I like giving the lips a darker look on the middle, so I took some darker red pastel on a q-tip and I tapped that on the very middle of the upper and lower lip. To intensify the purple of the eyes, I took some uh, pastel on a Q-tip. Q-tip's my best friend. They're like really good <laughs> for face ups, um, specifically these pointy ones. I've literally gone to like five drugstores before looking for these pointy Q-tips and I just bulk bought them off Amazon. Now I have thousands and it's a glorious day, but I tapped that pastel on top of the iris and I'm taking this white uh, watercolor pencil and I did a lot of shading on the eyes, so I have to bring back the highlights. So I'm doing white sharp lines around the eyes and a little bit on the lips, not so much though. Also on the nose, just everywhere. <laughs> Ooh, if you want a nose to look snatched, um, draw a white line down the bridge of it and then blend it out with a pointy Q-tip. Yes, pointy Q-tips. I really like the wrinkly kind of highlight look to doll's lips and typically or a lot of time I've seen it done with white and I've done it before with white and it's fine um, but lately I've been liking doing it with a light pink. I find that light pink is a little bit more forgiving than white and all you do is you just flick some lines down mainly on the bottom lip. For the brows we went with a good kind of universal black eyebrow. I love me a black eyebrow or just a dark eyebrow. The hair is going to be multicolored but it's mostly going to be dark so that's why we're going with that. For some dramatic shading to the eyes, I took black pastel and I tapped that at the very top of the iris. Y'all may notice if you watch a number of my videos that I have like paint kind of strokes all over my hands. Uh, when I do repaints and that is because I whenever I use paint on an eye whether it be for an eyelash or for details in the iris or anything I always test it on my hand first before I go on to the eye because I want to make sure that it's the thinnest line that I can get possible um, because there's just a lot of things that can go wrong I can have too much water on the brush and it's gonna start dripping all over the face and smear all the details or um, 
it could just be too thick, just things like that. So it's good to always test on your hand. With my Arteza Metallic Watercolor Palette, I took some of my, I mean, I think it's my favorite shade on the palette. It's a duo chromey purpley blue, and I tapped that on top of the pupil. The doll that I painted prior to this doll was my Spring Goddess doll, and I feel like going from that to this, where that was like the biggest head I've ever painted, um, was kind of jarring a little bit. It was making me mess up this face a little bit because I overestimated how big the eyes were. I thought they were bigger than they were, but I think that they're closer to like a Barbie size for the eyes. So I was adding in a lot of detail and it just was looking like nonsense. Um, so I ended up actually wiping away all the detail that you guys see in the eyes right now and going in for a more simplified look in a little bit. I wanted to mention because I almost ruined this face off. <laughs> while I was doing it, but thankfully it recovered. So midway through painting this, it started to rain and it wasn't like light rain, it was pretty intense rain. And I have sprayed in the rain before um, and it's been like relatively okay. Um, typically when this happens, I just spray out the window and I have the doll more kind of, not like in the room, but it's like in between inside and outside the window. So and I just spray and it's fine. But this time it was pouring and I was being impatient. So I sprayed it and um, if you'll, you'll notice at the end of this repaint that there's like a very intense glare on the face and that is why when there's like water in the air, I guess, it just makes the Mr. Super Clear kind of shiny. It made it harder to work with as well. But a water droplet got on the forehead while I was doing this. I thought I was gonna have to wipe the face because it just looked bad. I'm a little bit anal when it comes to face ups, but I just really didn't, it was like a weird texture on the forehead and it was kind of big. Um, but after spraying it like three times Mr. Super Clear, it went away. This is the point where I wiped the eyes and I went in for a more of a simple approach. I added a pink highlight uh, around the eyes and then for the eye shines, I just did two simple dots going towards the middle of the face. Um, I feel like this gives it kind of a cutesy look if you add them going towards the middle as opposed to where they would normally be where the light catches, which is on opposite sides. To create the look of gold specks in the eyes, it just taps some gold watercolor on top of the eyes as well. With the same color I went on top of the pupil with, which is my blue kind of purpley duochrome watercolor paint, um, I added some flicks of that to the brows and also a little bit to the lashes. Off camera, I added some little stars to his little cheekbones and I think you can see how shiny he is here. He's just got that dewy skin look. This is the yarn we're gonna be using. It's just a nice blend of uh, multiple colors, kind of swampy, colorful looking. It brushes out really pretty. Uh, I made some wefts off camera and I'm taking this one and just kind of rolling it together with my hot glue and then I'm going to be gluing that to the top of his head. It's gonna look ridiculous for a little bit but then he's gonna look very handsome and Vegeta-like. With my Elmer's glue all, I am placing those wefts spiraling out from that original weft that I put down until I get to the hairline. For the hairline, I cut the glued part off of one of the wefts and I'm placing some Elmer's glue all down and then I'm going to be placing that cut weft on top of the glue. When placing it, I don't want this to be a completely uniform kind of straight across application of the yarn. So I'm kind of tugging some a little bit farther down than others so it looks a bit more natural. I accidentally cut the hair off camera just into like basically a flat top. To make this look a little less weird, we're gonna be taking some scissors and I'm just cutting it so it looks more uneven. Um, literally more Vegeta-like, <laughs> basically. Vegeta was my inspo. Vegeta and Midsummer's Night Dream. Um, but I'm doing that and then after I'm done with the scissors, I'm taking an X-Acto blade and I'm just further razoring it so it looks more uneven. I'm doing this on my lap, by the way. It was just the easiest way to film it. My shirt says baloney. That is all. Here's how his hair turned out. I was kind of regretting not rooting the hairline, but I think this looks fine. 
Um, I painted one of my nail art gems, my moon ones, black and then put some duochrome blue paint on top of it and I'm gluing that to the forehead. Last year during Pride, I bought this beautiful fabric and um, I couldn't use it on that doll because it just didn't really make sense to. And um, I gotta use it today, all right? I finally have excuse, it's gorgeous. So I'm creating a jacket with it. I'm hemming all the sides with some glue. After everything's all nice and hemmed, I took the front and the back and I sewed them together good side to good side at the shoulder. I wanted the sleeves to have a poofy look, so I'm gather stitching the top and the bottom. I sewed a strip of purple fabric together at the bottom of the sleeve and then sewed the sleeves in place. Wow, gorge. Then, after that, um, I put the jacket together good side to good side and sewed up the side seam. Voila, we have a jacket. Y'all may know I love me a good bloomer. We're gonna make some bloomers. So I am hemming everything with the glue again. The bigger pieces of the pattern are the front and the larger pieces are actually the back. Um, I'm taking everything after it's done being hemmed and I'm sewing the front and the back pieces, the two front pieces together and the two back pieces together at the crotch. I sewed the front and the back together and gather stitched the top of it, taking this ribbon and sewing that over the gather stitch. I did basically the same thing that I did to the top to the bottom. I gather stitched it and then I sewed a ribbon on top. I then sewed each leg hole of the bloomers together. I sewed it up the butt and put some fasteners on and the bloomers are done. To decorate the jacket, a little while ago I got some like doll buttons off of Etsy. I'm gonna put the seller down below. And this jacket doesn't close. These are purely for decoration, but I'm sewing them in place. Now I wanted him to have like a crown going on um, and I wanted to make it out of vinyl and foam. Uh, I had like this had a couple of different variations, okay? So the first variation, I just glued everything in place with some Elmer's glue all layering and all together. I put it on front of his head and I was like, wow, that is like a gigantic. So I tried to cut it down and I thought it would be fine. So I put this little yellow star on top of it, I hot glued in place. Um, and then I tried it on him again, kind of put it in front of him. I was like, no, this is also way too big. So I made a real itty bitty one. So this had like three different versions of this. So, so much smaller. It's like the itty bitty baby. I also decided I was gonna put it on front. I was like, I don't really like it. So I decided to put it on the side. It's more of like a hair piece than a crown, but I don't know what you're gonna do. I made him some simple stockings out of some stretchy yellow fabric. I think I can confidently say, so I'm making the shoes out of Warbla, and for the longest time I was using a blow dryer with Warbla, but I finally splurged on a heat gun because I actually got it for resin stuff and now I love Warbla. Why? <laughs> I feel like I thought they were like the same thing. They're so not. So this just heats up the Warbla so much faster than my blow dryer was. Um, and it also has this like precision nib thing. So before the blow dryer would get the Warbla all over my desk. It was hard to keep in place. But this just, it really heats it up and it works fast. And it, I made these suit shoes super quick. So I just made a simple pattern and formed them around the foot and cut them where they need to be cut. And... It was a really simple process and I just feel so dumb because I have so much Warbla and I've just been like, no, I hate Warbla. But realistically, no, I hate blow dryers. 
and using them with Warble. I'm a true believer in Warble now. Um, I understand why Papa Natelier literally uses it for everything. That is me now. I wanted to give him like curled shoes, like kind of arabesque. So I'm doing the little curl with some epoxy sculpt. I sanded down the epoxy and painted the shoes purple with some acrylic paint. With the foam and vinyl that I used for the hairpiece, I'm just hot gluing some to the shoes. For the wings, I was looking at Etsy and noticed that a lot of the wings on there are made out of transparency paper, so I went to my local copy and print store and printed a couple up. I got these wings off of Adobe stock. Um, I'm using a free trial. Um, I need to cancel it because it's $30 monthly, but they had a bunch of wings on there. Uh, and I decided to go with the more bug-like version because the other ones are really cool, but the cool details weren't showing through with what I wanted to do. So I took some duochrome cellophane, cut out a piece, and then crumpled it up. The crumpling is going to give the wings more of like a bug-like texture, sort of like the veining that's going on on um, like insect wings. So I'm taking that and I'm taking the transparency paper. Um, I have two pieces of the wings, so two copies. I am taking this Loctite spray adhesive and I'm spraying that down on one side of the wings. Then I'm taking the duochrome cellophane and pressing that down on top. I spray another coat of the glue and then I put my second copy of the wings down on top of that. This uh, glue is pretty great because it's a little forgiving so I can kind of move around the second copy um, if it's not placed correctly. I place computer paper on top of the wings and I'm taking my hand and smoothing them out. This is so that if there's any air bubbles, it pushes them out. I cut the wings and it is time to decorate. So I took some wire and some glitter and I'm gluing all that and decorating the wings with some Elmer's glue wall. I think they came out pretty good and I swear this is like the easiest method ever. Taking a tiny break from the wings, I'm moving on to the body and blushing it with the same tones that I used on the face. I wanted him to have a constellation on his chest, so I chose the zodiac sign for Cancer because that's my zodiac sign. I'm painting that in with gold paint. I opted to attach the wings with magnets. I took some epoxy glue and I'm just stirring it all together and I'm going to be putting some magnets on his back. So on his butt, you'll see his butt looks very intense. It looks like somebody beat his butt. Um, that is because I grabbed the the butt area with my glove when I sprayed it with MSC when the MSC was wet. So I tried to go over it with some pink pastels. It looks bad. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna add some nude pastels on top to dull it down. I hot glued the wings on top of a piece of transparency paper. I'm going to be going over the hot glue and the wings 
uh, where it's attached with some epoxy glue just to reinforce it. His butt is looking 100 times better. It just looks like a sunburn now and not like somebody beat his butt. But I uh, took some epoxy glue and I'm epoxy gluing the magnets onto the bottom of the wings right there so that we can attach the magnets to the back. Off camera, I made a belt for him and I'm gonna be attaching some bits and bobs to it with a chain. Also off camera, I made him a simple choker with a star charm. I wanted him to have a staff so that he could like cast a spell and make people fall asleep or lull people to sleep. Um, I really liked this wire thing that I have. This is actually a card holder for like fancy parties. Um, you put the card on top of it. And I like the spiral part at the top because I feel like it's like hypnotizing people to sleep, or at least that's how I thought about it. Um, but I'm taking a bead and I put that on the top and the bottom, and then I'm wrapping a wire around and hot gluing it in place. Here he is in all his dream fairy like goodness. Um, I kind of love him. I love how he turned out. He makes me want more men. I want more men dolls or more boy dolls or whatever. Um, and I want more creatable world dolls. I just think they're really good bases if you guys are customizers. Um, it's always fun to try out a new base. I think that's one of the most exciting things for me when it comes to customization. Um, I kind of hate painting the same thing over and over again. It's just really boring for me and trying new bases is exciting. So um, I like how he turned out. I hope you guys like how he turned out. I hope if you guys are celebrating Pride, um, you're having a wonderful month. And um, definitely go check out my co-collaborators videos. I will have them all linked down below. I think everyone did a really cool job. And um, I'm gonna go to bed because it's late. And if you guys like this video, like this video, subscribe, it makes me happy. And I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Happy Pride, y'all. Have a good night.